Hi, welcome to Reality Check. My guest today is Dima Levin. He is an AI architect, advisor, consultant, entrepreneur, and uh, had been working in the area of generative AI uh, for a long time. So um, Dima, uh, uh, welcome to the channel. Uh, let's uh, have a discussion. First of all, introduce yourself and tell us your story. Hello, Ilya. Uh, thank you very much for uh, having an opportunity to speak to you today and make this interesting discussion together. I'm looking forward to it and make it as useful as possible for our viewers. Uh, from my side, I am Dima Levin, uh, originally from Kiev, Ukraine, working with AI and in AI uh, more than eight years already. I have made the projects and products in the area of AI or near AI for governments, cities, biggest industrial facilities, pharmaceutical companies, top tier, uh, tier one banks in the world. And uh, right now I'm a AI solution architect and consultant in 10 clouds where like for the last three months, uh, we already had started uh, more than 30 projects around implementation of generative AI into the daily activity of businesses from the banks to the uh, accounting companies all over the world. So I'll be happy today to share my experience in this area and looking forward to your questions. Excellent. So uh, first of all, uh, let me ask you a generic question. So what do you think about generative AI? Is it just another hype? Uh, if not, uh, how do you expect it will change our lives? Uh, how it will affect uh, the way we work and live and have fun? So what's what's your view on that? Great question. So first of all, what I'm thinking about generative AI is for sure the hype, but it's not the hype uh, without base for this hype. If previously like this web boom had enabled society and humanity for some um, some steps to take forward into the you know into the uh, evolution of the society itself, generative AI enables us to use the data that we uh, that we uh, learned to generate companies and people around the world generative ai enabling us right now to use the process automation um, if, if you don't have any developer skills it just it's really a game changer from the perspective of the interaction with the technique that technology that we have right now around us and inside of our lives as well as the great co-pilot in any area where you needs knowledge to be used. And this is it, like generative AI is the wonderful tool that helps on the daily base activity for anyone who asks for it. Uh, it's interesting that you mentioned co-pilot. Uh, yesterday I had a conversation with an old friend and we were discussing this particular subject, whether Gen AI is going to be a helper that will increase your productivity, or it will be a tool that will replace you at your work. So how do you see uh, what will be happening going forward? So very good question. Uh, the interesting fact that I have learned myself not so long time ago is that some company made the um, research that shown that the people who are using, like by using generative AI in daily base activities for workers, their level of effectiveness, efficiency and effectiveness uh, raised and much higher. So the people who are uh, people who are the best experts in the area, they are not benefiting from the generative AI as the people who are, let's say, not the best experts in their area. Taking this into consideration, I'm thinking of the uh, generative AI not as the replacement for people, but as the supporters for the uh, boost and equality in the uh, for like for workers around the different areas. So re to be replaced, it's not about generative AI in my opinion. It's more about AGI <laughs> if we achieve it some 
at some point. Uh, for the current uh, generative AI situation, I think it's more like a calculator and tool that if you use it, if you know how to use it effectively, you can benefit from it, whatever role uh, you have in your daily job. Interesting. So thank you very much for your answer, for sharing your um, thoughts on this. Um, now let's move closer to your um, solution. So. Uh, I have the whole bunch of questions for you on this, with this regard. First of all, what is the motivation uh, for building this solution? Uh, uh, second, uh, what customer problems does this solution solve and who are the customers? Great. So uh, briefly, uh, the solution that I'm going to present today is AI console by 10 clouds. The ideology for this solution is next is that we in 10 clouds see that they have the vision that the AI should be equal for everyone and it should be personalized by everyone. That's why we made the console, the tool that you can download on your local machine, you can use for your personal needs or the business needs. And this tool uh, is fully um, responsive to your needs that you're setting up by yourself and rules. So I will, I will showcase it a, a bit later, but as the potential audience, this is the people like, as an example, our CEO has wonderful uh, showcase when he, uh, he integrated the calendar contacts and a message and just with help of AI console, AI console with the one message like, hey, send to my girlfriend uh, my schedule for today. Uh, the AI console does uh, do does everything for him in the blink of the eye. So it's not no need, you know, to do the whole procedures like uh, in a long um, chain by yourself. You have just once to explain where to take information, how to use it, and then AI console will will show uh, will know how to use it correctly. Second is for the businesses, like uh, one of the use cases that we are having right now and in conversation with banks, with the, like with big institutions around the Europe is next, that we can, uh, people could uh, personalize their AI console with help of the swarm of agents it calls. So you are doing the, uh, aid, you are, highlighting the roles like project manager, product manager, legal assistant, accountant, CFO, whatever. You integrate it, explain these roles in the one environment. Then you map to them materials like onboarding materials, instructions, uh, frameworks, um, additional information. You also can do an API to the, your internal databases. And then in one shared environment, you just tap like as the, as the manager, like, hey, uh, this is the customer's call log. Please uh, work with it. Work with this. AI console manager inside the AI console will understand that this task is needed to be followed to the company's procedure. So it will go firstly to the agent that is like pre-sales engineer who will evaluate like the number of like the potential features, the number of uh, developers should be involved for the software development company and like timelines and the prices, let's say for this current project. Then it could go to the product delivery manager that will have this uh, epics and features roadmap and will help like will suggest for product delivery manager will suggest even the role, um, the assignment of the people who should be assigned to the current task on the current stage. Then it will go to the market, uh, to the marketer agent that will uh, write about this um, information for the presentations or the website or the post on LinkedIn. And it, it's completely autonomous. All you should do is in this AI console, you should type once or like twice some, you know, some additional thoughts, how it should happen from your side. So this is the tool that we have built. Uh, I hope that uh, I will be happy to explain how it works more. Uh, I, no, no, I, I love I love the idea. Uh, basically, I hate uh, being a sales guy. I hate um, the back office work. So as much as back office work can be done for me by uh, AI, um, the better uh, the better for me. I, I like to focus on human interaction 
rather than on uh, creating documents and specifications and uh, all that. This is this is awesome. Reality. So, Can you show us uh, the demo? Yes, for sure. Uh, so as we have not too much time, I will show how the AI console looks right now. Can you see my screen? Yes. So there are three tabs, as you can see. It's agents, materials, and chat. In agents, you have you can create a new agent where you explain like the name, um, the usage, Can you say it? Because the font is small. So uh, okay. uh, once you type it, just say say what you type. Sorry, for sure. So like the first idea that bumped into my head, I create the agent, like interviewer agent. It is usage. Usage. It used when you need to create a uh, when you need to create questions that should be asked to the person during the interview. Just ah. bumped into my head. I, and I like it already. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. And like the system information, this is the basically prompt. So when you type the behavior of the person, how it should be, how it should interact. So um, not to spend lots of time for crafting the system prompt in in real interview. Let's say we can go to the one of the agents that we have. It calls like I created the agent will spot me. It uh, collaborates for the product and project management and all related questions. So second part is materials. When you're like, as an example, product manager frameworks. So for the Padme agent, product management agent, I have created a supporting material that is like usage frameworks to support product manager, usually used as a support information for Padme. So that's all that I've typed in as the usage. And here I just copy paste it from us and our somewhere, I don't remember like the, you know, the 12 frameworks, 13 frameworks of how pro product manager should operate in the best way. So then when I'm open a new chat and I need, uh, um, let's say here, so in, in this chat, all the agents from this interface accessible at once and they are collaborating. So um, I want to create a startup that will help me with customer support uh, functions via uh, email. Something that just bumped into my head. So as we can see on the first stage, our AI console analyzes the request that I have uh, that I have shared with it. And it automatically understood that it's something related to product development, even if I haven't stated as the product itself. So no word product, product management, whatever. Just create a startup. And here it decided to use Padme agent that I'm showing you just about the product project management. And it, according to the materials that it has in the back of it, it proposed to me and proposes it is proposing to me in real time, actually, the, the, the steps that I should conduct for this purpose. And it's not just uh, stopping at this point. So it's not like the you know general chat GPT. If it will be question, like not about the product management, but let's say I want to create and use the scraping uh, Python program for websites if i do the this use case like this it will assign for me as you can see in in, in real time so um yeah we have some problem here but actually it it is assigning to me the programmer and this programmer crafts for me Yes, this, okay. So this programmer crafts for me in real life, you know, in real time, the Python program that could be used like right from the console and it could execute from the console itself. 
So it will know that not just not just the the, the, pro, the code being written, but the whole execution environment here works as well. So from the materials, it could be as the uh, as, as you see frameworks. It could be um, some APIs like import tra uh, trading on GitHub API that it could refer during the task. I, I could create as many materials as I want here, as many agents as I want here. And every time it will work in the same uh, collaborative manner. So it's not only the do it's not only doing for me the uh, the suggestion of how to act with my task in the one direction. But it also creates for me the plan and executes it, decided which agent should execute which part of the task in the real time, right from the console. So if I see that if, if I'm using like I'm stuck with the AI console, it will uh, help me uh, with suggestion like how to use onboarding guide. Yeah, if I have the problems here with the other part of the inside of the task. It will understand the previous context that had been used in this conversation and will again assign for me the helper, agent helper, who will this who will ask and suggest how can I help according to this task. If it is a new chat, it will know from the context of your interaction, it will know that you need to go to like start onboarding procedures. And how it can be used, it can be used like again, you can create here as much agents as you want. It can be Yoda, Yoda, it can be coach, it can be automator, programmer, planner, critic, writer, product delivery manager. It could be whatever agent you want. You just have to suggest usage, information, create some supporting materials and tell, tell about the materials when it should be used if it is needed for this agent. And the console will do rest for you. Interesting. What I understood uh, is that you can also set up some um, uh, interaction uh, with your live team members, not just with the AI agents that you've defined. So how do you, uh, within this tool, how do you communicate uh, with your other human uh, team members? So the AI console that I have shown, it is running locally. Um, mm -hmm. And it my AI console doesn't have any oh, any availability to contact to other people. But uh, if we want to establish the communication, we could have an API, let's say with the Slack or whatever, or LinkedIn. And we can gather like with an email, we can get the API and we can ask, okay, search for me 10 last emails that are um, with the proposal of the partnership or collaboration, structure it in the table and evaluate it from the product perspective according to my internal product in the company. It mm -hmm. will go to the email, it will scrape all the hundreds of emails, extract from them 10 emails that I need to have according to my prompt. Then it will bring it to AI console and suggest an agent that will perfectly use this task, that will perfectly do this task like the uh, product manager who will look through this task and say, okay, I think this could be used to support to our product. And then it could go to legal assistant, legal agent, and legal agent will scrape the, let's say, the um, will create the email outreach to the particular email that you have been chosen. And then programmer or automator agent will send back the API with the email and it will be ans answered. So you everything do from the console, but with help of this API, you can back and forth the information without any you know, additional steps, like going to email and stuff. Yeah, I understand that. Uh, at the same time, I really like your concept when um, you just can come back with the meeting notes and then you task um, the internal sales support agent uh, to work with this meeting notes and they are uh, turned into specs for the uh, uh, developer lead. And then they turned into the uh, presentation uh, for, for you. And then it's uh, all turned into proposal for, for the customer. So it generates all these different things based on the uh, all meeting notes you had with the customer. Uh, 
So that I really liked where it basically ventures to other people uh, with the useful um, flow of uh, knowledge and appropriate doc documentation. And the best part that you just have to do once, let's say, explain yep. how procedure should look like, place it into the materials, and console will do it the same as you described. So it's evolved by the usage and real life. It's not like, you know, it's not the fine tuning stuff. We, we are using multi rec, local multi rec, even without vector database. It's for techie guys. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you, you, you don't need to have any external resources to be, um, to be connected. If you want to use it effectively, you can even use your just local machine. That's all. Okay, got it, got it. So, uh, who are your customers, and uh, what problems of the customers does this solution solve? So, I will not name particular names of the companies. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But we are collaborating right now. What I will not name the use cases. So, we're collaborating right now, as an example, like with financial and healthcare institutions, and the use case, like let's say, for from the healthcare institutions. A very interesting one, in my opinion, is next that the um, the you know the people in the healthcare institutions who are like could be great doctors, they in the same time would not know, let's say, about how to calculate average or like some other st like statistical things. What they may need, you know, to make the decisions right, database decisions. So within this uh, institution, we are building this like environment of AI console that will include not only the supporting for the direct responsibilities for the doctor, let's say, like how to, uh, you know, how to make the documentation that is needed for the current patient without, you know, spending the time for drafting the document, as well as for the management of the healthcare institution, like they just need to type in like, okay, what was like the average uh, price for these things? Yeah, and it will go to the, uh, the console will go to the different sources, extract from them needed data, do the whole calculations and present it with the reasoning and steps behind these calculations for them. So um, for the bank's example, how the CI console could be used, it's the, um, again, we have the, uh, we, we, we could implement, or even the company who sell cars, it's very, very showcasing. Company who sells cars, how they are how do they are planning to use the console in the next manner. We are doing the customer support information like protocols, placing into the materials, placing into the materials the description how to uh, what options could be uh, used in different let's say critical situations with which customer supports are dealing with. We are placing the sales copilot. And then when this is the email arrived with the claim, like for something, it goes into the console and then console decides which um, it assigns the agent who evaluate the semantic context of this particular email message and, and decides which uh, bonus will be the best for to be implemented in this current, current stage. So um, what I mean by this, you can give discount to some customer or some customers just need to, to say we are apologizing and it has different um, outcomes financial outcomes as well for the company and for the customer um, happiness so um, as the customers we have all type of the businesses who have repeatable tasks and uh, with help of AI console you can deal with these repeatable tasks in the bleak of AI yeah, <laughs> without any problems by just stating, let's say, once how the procedure should be done right in the icons. Okay. And uh, do customers already use this solution? So we have the official release yesterday. Huh. Uh, yes. The, so that's why like, I, I'm happy to present it at, um, like out of the box, but behind the official release, we are using it in our company and we are starting to implement it to our some, some of our customers. Uh, we are just on the early stage, you know, and like we are telling, it is open source. You can download it from the website, yiconsole.com, if I recall correctly. And uh, you can also start using it and uh, take benefits straight away. It's free, completely free, it's open source. Uh, just 
shared our vision. And for the enterprise, what we are doing is the um, tailoring the AI console and um, like installing the agents, doing the logic, doing the materials for them uh, as the part of the collaboration between us creators yeah, and them as the users. Interesting. Uh, as uh, It's probably too early to talk about the outcomes for your customers, but uh, since you are using this internally, any outcomes for you as the user of your own technology? So the, uh, the happiest users of the AI console are sales, <laughs> I think, in our company and project managers, because uh, we have very well described processes, how we should do uh which how what steps should be taken by which uh role inside of our company in which situation and that's why you don't know you, you don't need right now to decide like the case that i i described about like we have the call log and just place it and, and bam we have the pre-sales uh or draft for, for pre-sales evaluation bam we have the epics and the um, it features yeah for the for the project as well as the roles that could be assigned to the particular task. This is there. So they are the like the people who are and the the third role that is super happy with the AI console are marketers, because drafting from the uh, drafting the AI of uh, the marketing materials based on our internal information and uploading automatically via code. In, in the way of the code is something that could be right now with help of AI console also made very easily, you know, without additional steps and uh, misplacing your attention into the bunch of the external tools. Interesting. So how do you see the future of your solution and uh, generative AI in general? Uh, what will happen in a year from now? Very good question. For the uh, future of solution, I hope that uh, we are evolving every day. Yes, we are, and the AI console evolves, your personal AI console evolves uh, when you're using it, our common AI console evolves when we are all using it. And uh, we are starting to implement this project, this, this solution for our customers, and we see already this positive feedback. So I'm looking forward when it will be, you know, uh, used more broader. That's why I'm also happy to make some you know, <laughs> explanation how, how it works to you here. Uh, from, the, uh, from the side of generative AI, it's a very hard question because um, I think it was hard to predict how generative AI uh, will look like uh, in a year from a year ago when just let's say, enthusiasts in uh, NLP area uh, were using uh, BERT as an example. And boom, ChatGPT 3.5, boom, ChatGPT 4 for everyone. It's like, it's, it's, it's a very big progress. But what I can predict really is based on the what is happening right now. So generative AI right now, it helps to label the data and use the, you know, the big massive of data that are in structure. So we learned companies and cities and government people learn how to collect the data and store it with some data lakes and stuff, <laughs> but not how to use it. With help of generative AI, the solutions could be built that will help to reuse this data effectively that we are collecting previously, like how to label it, even like collaboration of LLM and guns, as an example, like I will not go into technical details, but it's like how to label data, how to use the data that previously cannot be used because of the structure. B, automation of processes out of the box. Right now, what I see with the AI console in our company is that people who are like no developers, they are already good if they have just idea they could, you know, with few sentences in the natural language, they could create the tool by themselves to help them to support them and daily activity. And they are the best, like the best tool for your needs is the one that you created by yourself because no one else knows your needs as good as you. And the generative AI enables people, empowered people to create. And third one is the natural language interface as the future. I am the big fan of the natural language interface and I'm sure that every company, every uh, 
governmental institution, city, every person, everyone needs to start communicate with their data, with their technologies, with their platforms, whatever, in natural language, how we are communicating one to each other. So previously, we need some layers in terms of the programs of people who are doing some research, etc. So like for business intelligence yeah, and some sort of things, we need to have a guy who knows how we do in which data sources to go, uh, what data to take, how to how to use it and how to present it right now. It can be explained as the test and the AI could make it happen if you explain it in a well way, in the in the in the correct manner. And the natural language with the evolving of the other types of the generative AI and text like image generation and also the collaboration of voice to text solutions with generative AI enables us right now to see the different type of the technologies emerging around, like the AI pin, very interesting concept. You know, when you don't need a screen anymore, you can communicate just with help of the voice and then and with the projections. The bicycles in the Amsterdam, if I recall correctly, they're also using natural language interface, like with the uh, almost voice to voice and uh, like the technological area of the humanity could in five years could be completely different like the jump from the phones that had you know this wheel inside of it yeah, to iphone so something that we are we are right now somewhere in the nokia uh, 11 to 2 <laughs> or 11 0, 0. <laughs> so we will see how it will be in like in two three years but with help of the moore's law i think that it's very dangerous to make some uh you know strict predictions Got it. So um, let me ask you a question uh, from my previous guest speaker. Uh, which applications of Gen AI uh, you would consider a high risk? Uh, obviously, lots of people are talking about the fact that oh, no, AI is so dangerous, uh, it's a threat for humanity. So which apps you think are dangerous? Great question. I um, was mentoring uh, students from one Belgium university. They made a grant application uh, for the misinformation um, tool based on AI. Uh, so they want to fight against uh, fake news, let's say. And uh, I think that the one of the most dangerous thing that generative AI brings to us is the how easy right now to create some thing, <laughs> something, whatever you want that will look like real, that will look like real, you know? It's just for now to create like a previously, you know, some countries needed to create the fabric of trolls, you know, to do the informational attacks on the other countries, you know, and to manipulate the um, thoughts yeah, of the of, of people in the internet and, and whatever. Right now, you don't need the fabric of where thousands of people will work on you. You just need one, you know, one tool and few cool data scientists that will make it autonomously. By semantic analysis, will place the message that will mislead you into the direction they want to mislead. You. Mis they wanted to mislead. You. So, I'm sure that the miss that the fake news, the information is the is the one of the hardest area right now because um, I don't see in the educational systems the critical thinking as the uh, you know as the skill that we should propagate towards our children and, and the people and not, not only children for everyone. Everyone needs to take critical thinking courses right now. <laughs> I engage you. <laughs> yeah, thank you very much. That that's a uh, that's a great view. So uh, my last question to you is, what is your question to my next speaker? Great, I have prepared one. Uh, where do you think generative AI is being overused? In which areas we could live without it? And uh, still, you know, best uh, like people trying to implement it without any needs. You know, as the very at each hype technology we started with you is the hype. Is it the hype or mm -hmm. I also think it's hype based on something, but based on facts. 
uh, and it's useful hype. But still, you know, some areas can reuse NLP and stuff. I will be happy to hear the answer from your next guest on this uh, question. In interesting. Dima, uh, thank you so much uh, for, you, for sharing your product, your experience, and your thoughts. I really enjoyed our conversation. Thank you so much. Me as well. Thank you very much, Ilya, for having me here today for this convo, and I hope it will be useful. I will be happy to hear additional thoughts, and I will read your comments. I will be looking my DM. Uh, feel free to write me uh, with if you disagree with me. I'm always happy to talk about it because truth, truth always lays, you know, in the in the dialogue. Could be mind with help of the dialogue and that's why uh, i really appreciate your efforts Ilya, in this area you know to to help to people to talk about it we need to talk about it because it's scary sometimes sometimes hard but it's definitely something that could bring something great in our lives thank you and uh, all of you uh, don't forget to subscribe to this channel so you will not miss this interview and uh, all future interviews thank you bye bye bye